Hello everyone. I know there's not a lock in this picture, it's all knives. Um, this is because I'm, I'm not going to branch off into a bunch of, you know, into doing a bunch of uh, videos on knives and stuff. This is just going to show my um, everyday carry knives that I used to have uh, progressing up to the latest one I got. One of the most expensive ones is the uh, Cold Steel Recon 1. Um, big beast of a knife. There's only two criticisms I have of it. Uh, initial criticisms right now that I knew were gonna be uh, were gonna be there. One is the locking system. Even though it's very strong and very good, it's almost a two hand. It's, I know it's gonna break in, but it's so strong right now. It's pretty hard to close that up. And the second one is this is very grippy G10 handle material. Um, this thing is so strong that even with um, cargo pants and stuff like that, it's hard to get it in or out. So one of the mods a lot of people do is take sandpaper, which is what I'm going to do. Also, these little um, star things, I don't have one that small. So I can't just remove this and get to it easily. I don't want to pry on it with, you know... Um, a screwdriver or anything else so I'm just going to take some emery cloth or sandpaper cloth and sandpaper side down and just go back and forth on this and smooth that out that seems to be one of the mods that I've seen a lot of people do on that um, this knife goes for about 80 to 100 dollars depending on where you get it I like the the design of the blade the the shape and everything um, it's a nice wide blade it's sturdy uh, I think this particular knife, the locking system is rated like 300 pounds that they did without it failing. They stuck it in a thing and held weights off of it. So it can handle my body weight and then some, like twice my body weight. So that's always good. I just wanted to show what I originally started off with. It was a Buck 110 Folding Hunter. I carried this in the military. I made my own pouch out of webbing and stuff like that. And uh, it's a good knife. It's a sturdy knife. Um, it's one of the early ones. The like two star or whatever. They, they went through a, a design change. Um, a little bit heavy. I, had an, I have a system, another one that I didn't carry it too much, where it keeps the blade partially exposed like this. And then when you pull it out, it deploys it. Um, but a very good knife. Very good, sturdy, rough-use knife. Uh, then, in the 80s, I switched over to a, a Gerber Easy Out in uh, ATS 34 steel. Very nice, um, everyday carry light knife. The uh, serrations on here are... <clears throat> Or good enough to cut most of the tougher stuff that I was running up against. You still have a little bit of a knife blade up there. The Recon one that I got um, came available. You can get them in uh, Tonto Blade and uh, Clip Point and uh, partially serrated. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the partially serrated anymore. I mean, you'll see a lot of my other knives like that still have them, but. Uh, if it's sharp enough, you can usually get by with whatever you want. This is an Oppenel, um number 8, I believe. Let me look at it. has it up over here. Yeah, number 8. It has this type of lock system, which is very um, solid. You can just tighten it up. It's kind of like tapered. So as you tighten it, it you know locks it in. You don't get any blade play. Um, very nice slicer. This one right here, good for cutting things and, you know, like fruit and stuff like that. Lightweight, pretty good knife. Here's where I started getting into the kind of more cheesy uh, knives that I was carrying. I didn't carry this one very much. It's a, a flipper. I just got it mainly because it's a Kershaw. The very first flipper that I ever bought, self-destructed after a couple of, of flips. You know, you're always going to be playing around with it. Ugh. And this thing just like flew apart. So it was one of these Kershaws, but I had gotten another one. 
I think what drew it to me was the uh, spear point kind of like uh, blade design. I really like that design. And it feels fairly good in the hand. I just never really carried it that much. I don't know what there was about it. Oh, also the liner locks on these. I'm not a big fan of liner locks. I mean, they're they're secure, yet yeah, mostly, but there's a tendency to, um, you can get your finger in the way. You've got to put your hand in the, basically a blade clothing path to get it shut. Now, there's one other uh, knife that I found that was a liner lock. This is a cheap Japanese one. It had a little square here that you pushed. That would actuate on the uh, lever down there and push it out of the way, which is pretty cool. It keeps your finger out of the way from because this one has cut me once before. And like I said, going more cheesy, here's the M Tech Ballistic. I got like two of these for ten dollars or something. My whole purpose for getting this was just an everyday carry flipper type of knife that you can use and abuse and drop. And yeah, it's 440 stainless steel, basically, but it's gold, kind of glary, you know, and gaudy and everything. Just a beater, you know, just to kind of like uh, use at work, you know. This one's been dropped and um, messed around with it. But it, it's okay, but it's nothing special, like I said. And then I was watching Jolly Peanuts. Uh, um, he does lock picking videos, but he also does uh, gun reviews and... Uh, knife reviews and he's been doing knife reviews lately which brought me back into where I, I really like knives I've, I've always carried a knife with me and uh, I have this uh, A.G. Russell that I got when I was in the military in uh, 1977 and the only thing about it that I've always noticed is they never they didn't get this flatness exactly right you got more width up here on the knife but this is a very good knife. I made my own little sheath, you know, out of it uh, with leather in the 80s and stuff after a while. Um, not super secure the way I did it there. I also used to have a, a piece of uh, paracord that I wrapped through here that tied down to help hold it. Kind of like a little knot that you could undo because it was a little bit loose. Um, but a pretty good first attempt at making a nice sheep i think for, for myself same with this all i did was like so a ballistic nylon and stuff and it worked out perfectly for what i needed i was velcro is not super great but uh it worked like i said for what i needed and uh this one like i said it's it's um i'm not going to branch off i know some a lot of lock pickers get into other hobbies and then you start seeing nothing but that coming up on their channel I just want to let you know that um, from time to time, if I get a different, I, I can't afford, you know, these, like I said, it's $80. You know how many locks you can get with that or a good pick set and stuff. But I wanted to get one lock, uh, one knife, basically, that uh, would be a heavy-duty uh, use knife that I could carry every day if I wanted to. And uh, I probably wouldn't have to buy another knife again if I needed to. Other than, like I said, this this little um, triad locking system, this spine lock is uh, it's pretty difficult. I'm no wimp, but, I mean, you can see there's a little dent in my thumb from just trying to close that thing. And any new knife, you know, you're going to want to play around with it. Well, to get it to do that opening again, you're going to have to push down here on this. And it's, it's almost a two-handed system right now. No big deal. You know, I mean, like I said, I, I knew this was coming. And just like with the, the really grippy, you can buy our nails on this thing. Um, I knew that was going to be there. And I, and I know what the mods are to it. And I've got no problem with that. So the steel is, uh, they switched from a, a CTS, a cold tool steel or something like that. Chromium tool steel, XHP, some kind of annealing stuff. I'm not a super, you know metal freak but it's it was a better steel supposedly than this s35 vn which are going to but they had no choice they just couldn't get the stuff in in the demand that they had for it you know they just couldn't get the stock so they had to switch to this which is not bad as far as like edge retention from what i've read but these, this thing is is super sharp i mean it comes out of the box sharp razor sharp i don't have any paper like i said i'm not i'm not going to 
there's a lot better people out there that are doing a lot better knife reviews. You know, they'll give you uh, much better reviews than what I do. I, I, I'm just, this was just for the people that normally follow my channel, just to let them know that, uh, that yeah, I'm into, the, I, I do like knives. I always have a knife on me, usually at least one. And uh, <clears throat> I used to like guns a lot too, but I don't carry guns anymore. And I only have a few guns left and stuff, but. I uh, just want to get you a quick little everyday carry knife thing that I'm switching from the crappy stuff to the much better stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's just basically it, you know, as far as, like, ease of carry and ease of use. This one is an easy out, and it's one of the better, like, daily carry type things out of all of these. I have to rate, you know, this one I'm going to be carrying a lot because... Uh, I just got it. Spent a lot of money on it, so. Thank you for watching, and I would say happy picking, but happy box cutting on this one.